Hello, everyone. Um, it's great to be here, uh, and uh, I hope you uh, uh, enjoy the conference. Uh, so uh, my name is Kevin Wan. Uh, a little bit of my uh, background, I started contributing to uh, Kubernetes back to 2015, and uh, the first area I worked on is actually scheduling, so I'm really the scheduling guy to give this talk. Um, uh, as you know that, um, so uh, today there are a lot of uh, uh, workloads uh, need more GPU, and especially you know that uh, the increasing, the increasing uh, uh, you know usage of uh, AI workloads, especially uh, there are more and more training workloads running on top of Kubernetes, and we know that actually the uh, the GPU price is kind of very high, and which leads uh, resulting the very high uh, training cost, and also uh, we know that uh, the the GPU because they are very expensive, right? We we are always trying to improve the efficiency, the utility, uh, 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 no matter uh, from the you know time perspective or from the you know allocation uh, perspective, and also. Uh, uh, because some of the uh, uh, the, the process uh, perspective issue, actually the per, uh, procurement of the hardware is kind of uh, take a long time. So it's called also kind of a problem, you know, to uh, really uh, to to provide the GPU resources for the people to use. So um, I I would say uh, for me, uh, to my perspective, the challenge of uh, a GPU. Uh, Utilization uh, uh, mainly coming three uh, way. One is about the the location of the uh, GPU resources because uh, you you might have uh, some of the GPU resource in the on-prem data center, but you also need some from the, for example, public cloud because you know uh, when when it uh, goes into the cloud bursting scenario, and also uh, in some of the uh, organization there are. Uh, GPU resources uh, owned by the different uh, team, no matter it's a kind of uh, one infra team with multiple uh, application team, business team, or uh, directly managed by different uh, team. Uh, Sometimes when, when one of the uh, application get very high uh, uh, pressure, uh, how to kind of borrow the resources from the other team is, a, is really a, a problem. And also, uh, 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 there are kind of, you know, uh, because their hardware, also the, the driver software, the CUDA, they are, uh, keep upgrading. So you might have, uh, different types of, uh, of GPU and also the, the, uh, the corresponding, uh, CUDA in, in your uh, environment. So, uh, then, uh, it can all becomes a problem. How should we, uh, develop a, a, a platform to deal with that? And especially when uh, when you move into a multi-cluster architecture, multi-cloud architecture, how to uh, efficiently uh, manage all the resources and how to uh, you know let the the application, the business team uh, help themselves is, is really uh, very important. Yeah. So uh, I I summarized the sum of the. Uh, capabilities. I think it's a very important to an uh, ideal platform. Uh, it's not all uh, of the problem, but I think they are very important. So first of all, is about the, actually uh, we need a kind of uh, a unified uh, abstraction uh, for defining or uh, for indicating the workloads on top of a, a multi-cluster, multi-cloud uh, architecture. Uh, this, this is kind of very basic. Uh, we help you, you know, to to describe your requirement about your workload, how much, uh, how many uh, resources, and as well as uh, if there's any, uh, you know, requirement about the uh, the location, uh, the top, topology uh, requirements, sort of things, and also uh, when you're uh, scheduling GPU, there are kind of more things need to think about. We know that in the uh, single cluster scheduling, for example, GAN scheduling become a very basic feature, right? But moving from a multi-cluster level, you know, uh, 
how to achieve gun scheduling among multi-cluster, uh, it, it's a little more, a bit more complicated. And also from a time perspective, we know that uh, if you allocated part of the resource, uh, but the, the whole job still need to wait all the uh, pods, all the instances to be ready, then load the data and start training. So from the time perspective, uh, it's kind of better you have some queue mechanism to to make sure uh, you, you don't uh, waste the GPU time. All right. And also, uh, uh, in ensuring the cluster fail over to support, you know, the workload migration between uh, clusters is very important. And also, uh, uh, when you move to the uh, multi-cluster or multi-cloud architecture, uh, the one-level scheduling is kind of, uh, not very easy to implement because you are uh, caching too much data of the whole uh, environment. Uh, but uh, when you choose the two level scheduling, the, the consistency and the, the efficiency become a very uh, big problem. Yeah, and also uh, today uh, a lot of people are uh, exploring the, uh, the implementation of the GPU sharing, right? Uh, this is also uh, a very interesting topic. So a overview of the uh, uh, architecture looks like this. So uh, we have you, uh, multiple Kubernetes clusters, no matter uh, it's in a, a data center or it's in a, a pub public cloud, no matter it has a floating I IP address or not. Uh, with uh, Kamada on top of it, it's quite of easy to uh, unify the management and also uh, it will uh, capture the uh, cluster status as well as the available resources automatically. And uh, uh, with that, uh, also it's kind of quite easy to enable some of the uh, single cluster compatible APIs uh, on top of the uh, multi-cluster layer. It's also uh, one of the key features provi provided by Kamada. And uh, in the, uh, the in-cluster uh, scheduling actually uh, Volcano uh, today already uh, uh, do a very uh, good job to help you, you know, uh, schedule the AI machine learning big data workloads together with the, the, uh, the long running workloads. So uh, it's actually uh, quite straightforward when you are moving from uh, uh, no matter a single cluster or multiple kind of in, uh, individual scheduler, uh, cluster architecture to a unified uh, multi-cluster cluster, cluster uh, architecture with uh, Volcano and the Kamada. And also, uh, actually, we are kind of relying on Prometheus to, to, uh, to collect the real-time usage data to help uh, scheduling uh, decision-making. Yeah, the, this is kind of also re, uh, reduce the waste of uh, uh, the resources, especially when people uh, don't, you know, set very accurate resource requirement. Um, so uh, let's move into a little bit more details about uh, how this whole thing can work. Uh, for the job ab abstraction, uh, actually we need a kind of, uh, you know, we need uh, to deal with uh, uh, several things. Uh, for example, a typical uh, AI workload always consists of uh, different components or rows, right? Like the TensorFlow, they have the, uh, the parameter server, the worker, and also uh, PyTorch, Ray. Uh, they all have different uh, uh, pod definition uh, for each component. And also uh, from the resource allocation uh, part, uh, the count scheduling and as well as the other uh, resource uh, scheduling requirement become very uh, important. And also, um, uh, we know that inside one of the, for example, the training, uh, training workload, the communication between the different components is quite heavy. So we'd better schedule them uh, together uh, from, a, for example, the network perspective or from the physical location perspective to make sure they uh, they don't waste uh, too much time on uh, waiting the request. Yeah, so so that results in a very a unified uh, abstraction uh, to deal with that, and especially 
you know that uh, today there are a lot of people already implemented some part of that on top of a uh, single cluster architecture. So we think that uh, if we can move very straightforward, it will be very helpful. We don't want to ask people to change any, anything when you migrate from a uh, single cluster to a multi-cluster. So uh, today in the Ingo, uh, single cluster uh, environment, we, for example, we already have the uh, volcano job definition. It's kind of uh, the unified API abstract to help you uh, create uh, or define a TensorFlow training uh, job or uh, PyTorch or the other kind of uh, the uh, job. And with Kamada, it's quite easy to enable it in the uh, multi-cluster layer uh, level because uh, uh, Kamada supports uh, the, the definition agnostic uh, CRD uh, among the multiple uh, multi-cluster architecture. And also uh, for the GAN scheduling, uh, uh, in this architecture, it's also uh, actually quite clear, quite easy to implement. Uh, so the way we, uh, we implement is make sure uh, every workload uh, scheduled to one cluster because when you schedule uh, it into multiple parts to multiple uh, scheduler, then the, uh, the scheduler inside each cluster uh, it's not quite easy to collaborate with each other. Yeah, so if you can schedule everything into one of the scheduler, uh, scheduler things become very easy. And uh, uh, the way we do inside uh, uh, the Kamada layer is that uh, we actually count the resource requirement uh, for the whole workload as well as each uh, pod and then uh, Inside Kamada, there's a component called a scheduler estimator. It will help you uh, calculate the actually uh, the actual replicas of the uh, workload able to run in the cluster. So in this uh, example, you can see uh, like cluster one, they have exactly 10 replicas able, able to run. Uh, according to the requirement, but the cluster two and the cluster three, they can uh, only run part of them. Yeah, and uh, uh, so that's kind of quite easy. And uh, when it goes into the uh, certain cluster, uh, there are still some of the uh, race condition might uh, occur. For example, uh, Kamada made the decision at the certain uh, point of the time but in the next uh, uh, cycle, the HPA uh, controller in the cluster uh, scaled out some of the other workloads, then it becomes a kind of conflict, right? You might not have enough uh, uh, resource uh, to run it. So the in-cluster gun scheduling is still uh, kind of guaranteed by the volcano. Yeah, uh, so uh, this is actually a little bit more about the, uh, the features of uh, Kamada. So uh, Kamada actually uh, automatically uh, clad the resource usage of the uh, cluster. Uh, it's not just about the summary of the whole cluster, but also the, the resource, uh, uh, the kind of resource profile, uh, like how many nodes have a different uh, uh, available resources and also it helps uh, automatically to uh, capture the cluster healthy status to make sure every decision made is uh, kind of uh, able to run the workload and also uh, from the multi-cluster la layer uh, besides the resource usage we also uh, support the, the the topology requirement and uh, uh, helps user to kind of achieve the uh, for example, the zone uh, level uh, availability requirement as well as the other uh, topology uh, level thing. And also um, in the other uh, case, there are requirements about, you know, uh, the preference of different cluster or different data center. For example, uh, one of the user, they always prefer to uh, use the on-prem uh, resources and then 
if uh, there's no enough resources, uh, go to the public cloud. So with the Kamada, uh, there's a feature called uh, the the uh, cluster group. Uh, it means yeah, that you can basically schedule uh, among different cluster group in a in a uh, in a time order. You can always try schedule to the uh, on-prem clusters first, then uh, try out the the second group. Uh, that helps user to easily achieve the the on-prem preferred uh, scheduling among different uh, uh, different clusters, different cloud uh, environments. Um, and also, uh, we know that uh, today there are kind of uh, high uh, chance to to emit some uh, failover thing, uh, uh, the disaster thing. For example, if you, uh, one of the cluster uh, uh, made some problem, we need to uh, efficiently uh, to detect the uh, disaster and uh, schedule all the things to the other um, to the other cluster. So uh, with Kamada, uh, uh, Kamada provides uh, the different layer of the the status management of the cluster. So it's quite easy to to detect whether it's kind of the uh, for example, the, the DNS down or some of the hardware down uh, issue and make sure uh, you can schedule all the things to the other cluster. And also in some case, uh, uh, you know that uh, the application may be kind of uh, uh, particularly uh, down for some specific reason. Uh, it's not, uh, not possible to recover uh, inside that cluster. So Kamada also helped uh, uh, provide the capability to define and detect that uh, status and help you to uh, migrate just the sum of the uh, applications. And for the uh, uh, scheduling thing, actually, uh, you know that uh, uh, the, in a multi-cluster architecture, there are a lot of information in the in the in the cluster status. So uh, in Kamada, in the whole architecture, we actually implement in a uh, kind of different layer to to achieve that. For example, Kamada provide the node summary. It's kind of very, um, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very general summary of the whole resources inside of one cluster. It's quite easy to help uh, the Kamada scheduler um, make quick decision among uh, different clusters, which one is the best to to go? But the accuracy is kind of not very high because uh, we lost some of the details of, uh, about the uh, resources. So uh, especially when the the resources is kind of very uh, you, you know uh, fragmented in the cluster, it becomes a problem. So the resource model uh, is kind of uh, more. Um, detailed way to simulate the, the cluster resource status. It will define, uh, let users to define different uh, degrees for the resources and also uh, it's able to uh, take a different type of resources into consideration and uh, Kamada will use this uh, uh, resource information, the resource modeling information to to help make the decision. But still, it's kind of uh, uh, more detailed, but it's a summary, so, so it's kind of uh, in the middle of the accuracy and of the, uh, also the efficiency of the scheduling. And also with a, a more powerful uh, mechanism is the, the uh, scheduler estimator. It's actually kind of part of the uh, single cluster scheduler running uh, on top of the uh, multi-cluster layer. So uh, when you got a workload, uh, the, each of the estimator instance will kind of simulate a in-cluster in scheduling and uh, return the uh, result to check which cluster uh, is able to run the whole uh, replicas of the uh, workload. Uh, and definitely it, it, it requires more resources in the uh, control plan. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, there are still some uh, risk conditions may occur. So uh, we have some uh, rebalancing uh, mechanism uh, by enforced by the actually the Kamada D scheduler. Uh, the key challenging thing is that 
we still prefer the cluster to kind of uh, to 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 re, uh, restart the the workload by itself, uh, and how to detect the middle status that uh, it's not going to be fixed inside one cluster, and uh, we need to kind of migrate the workloads uh, across cluster. Yeah, so uh, so uh, Kamana uh, descheduler uh, provides uh, different uh, input uh, uh, requirements, input rules for users to uh, to define the uh, the trigger status, and then it goes to uh, goes to the evade the uh, replicas from one of the uh, clusters, and then the Kamada scheduler will uh, will retry scheduling. Okay, uh, from the uh, from the uh, GPU uh, virtualization part, actually, uh, you know, today uh, GPU sharing is a very hot topic, and actually, uh, it's already supporting the scheduling level uh, in the control plan, uh, you know, in, uh, and it has been uh, quite a long time. The key challenge is the isolation of the GPU memory as well as the the, the, the computing power. So currently, there are uh, multiple ways to achieve that. For example, uh, someone may prefer to implement at uh, CUDA level, and the others try uh, implement at the driver level. And there are also some of the implementations uh, try from a, 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 a MIG way, right? The multi instance group. Uh, in uh, and actually, the, these three ways have different, you know. Uh, pros and cons. In Volcano, we provided the solution at the uh, CUDA level, uh, which is uh, much easier to uh, implement and uh, easier to maintain as a uh, community implementation. Um, because of the time is uh, limited, so uh, so that's all about my talk. And if you uh, like to dive into more uh, details, uh, there's another talk uh, will be deli delivered by. Uh, my colleague. It's on the uh, Friday afternoon. Uh, uh, we will introduce more details about uh, this whole architecture. Okay. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, any questions? Yes. There's a microphone. Sorry. This is Abhishek from IB Research. So I have a question. Um, a workload consists of a CRD and the workload itself. So what does this whole mechanism do to transport the CRD to the target cluster? Uh, so the question is the uh, CRD support on top of the, this architecture, right? Yeah, I mean, what if one of the clusters does not have a TensorFlow CRD installed? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, uh, the, uh, the, this is a kind of a requirement. You know, you you need to install the CRD in the underlying member cluster. Yeah, and then uh, uh, actually, so Kamada helps you to propagate the the custom resource to, uh, to the under underlying cluster. Uh, but actually, you can also uh, use Kamada to install the the CRD. And, uh... Hey, great talk. Thanks so much. Um, question um, regarding Volcano, is there, is there any other scheduler that you think is like, you know, why did you pick Volcano versus other schedulers? Yeah, um, so uh, you know that uh, uh, in the early days, the Kubernetes scheduler is more uh, supporting like the microservices. And also, you know that uh, actually, by the the there is a kind of implicit uh, mechanism that the smaller pod always succeed in scheduling when the the cluster lack of is lack of resource, right? Uh, it's about the fair sharing. And also, uh, uh, in in the early days, uh, Kubernetes don't have the gun scheduling mechanism and don't have queue, uh, you know, mechanism for for uh, the battery in the workloads. So that's why uh, we uh, studied the, the Volcano project. So actually Volcano project comes from the 
a sub project on the Kubernetes called the uh, Cube Batch. Yeah, uh, Cube Batch is just a uh, batch scheduler on top of Kubernetes, uh, but we also need some uh, uh, controller mechanism to help uh, implement the queue. For example, you can define the queue and uh, bind the queue to some certain set of the resources inside the cluster. So that's why we have Volcano. Yeah. Oh, sorry. So Volcano is a project from your team? Uh, actually, actually, it's started from my team, but uh, today it's a CNCF incubation level project, and it's already, uh, you know, maintained by uh, maintainers from different organizations. Thank you. Uh, last question. Hi, hello. Uh, how would you deal with, like, uh very big workloads, let's say you have like today LLMs that need multiple GPUs. Do you think you, you can divide them between two clusters, like not gang scheduling, but schedule the jobs for two different clusters? Uh, that, that is also we are kind of uh, exploring. Uh, I think it, it depends on two part of the things. Ver first is the, uh, how is the workload really uh, uh, able to be uh, divided into different parts and uh, kind of that's a very basic part, right? If you are not able to divide it, uh, uh, we're not able to resolve it, right? And a second part is actually from the uh, underlying hardware uh, level. Actually, there are some of the, uh, uh, the, the hardware company, they are exploring the path to kind of combine multiple, um, uh, multiple for example, multiple GPUs or the other type of uh, MPUs to work together to uh, to act like a, a, a large GPU. So I think they, these two uh, work together can help resolve this problem. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you all for uh, listening. If you have any question, I'm, uh, I will sit back. Yeah. <laughs>